Hello, Hateless Gaming here. Uh, today I want to bring you guys another kind of playing through a mission and just kind of general mission kind of tips and, and guide. Uh, today I have unauthorized military presence and I have a special character made uh, specifically for this uh, to show you guys uh, the idea of this video is to demonstrate the mission running is easy and that anybody can do it. Uh, so I have a character that I have butchered his skills in such a way that he has piss poor skills or I've trained him in such a way that for specific ships he has really bad skills and he can do the other tasks that I ask of him and uh, I know we didn't have Nika in the last couple of videos uh, she's okay she's fine I promise she's a super happy cat uh, she just didn't show up when I was recording and sometimes she chooses to, sometimes she chooses not to. But when I start talking, she generally shows up. Uh, anyways, without further ado, uh, the mission we have here is Unauthorized Military Presence. Uh, it is a mission where you have to clear one room, and then you go in another room, kill everything, and then you get these little militant dudes, and you bring them back. It's a pretty easy mission to do. And uh, just to kind of go over the ship, we have here a Kaldari, or not even a Kaldari Navy Raven. This is a, a Raven, just standard Raven. Um, normally I got something fancy to show you. This thing is cheaper than the Hecate that I've flown. Uh, the only module that is worth anything on this is the Dreadgrest, uh, uh, Dreadgrest to X-Type Large Shield Booster. Uh, and then it's Torpedo Fit. Again, we have Arbalus because that's all that we can use. Uh, we have a prop mod, a couple hardeners, a cap recharger. I actually tested this with a cap battery. With my current skills, the cap recharger and the cap battery provide a similar result, and I prefer faster recharge over longer duration. Uh, so I went this way. Uh, if you prefer a little bit more duration or a little bit additional cap here, it's probably better to have the battery, but I, I, I have a preference towards faster recharge because when you make the mistake of going under, it comes back up a little faster. Uh, we have two missile guidance computers, I have three ballistics control systems, and two missile guidance enhancers, and then three capacitor control circuits. Again, all kept tier, tier one, and you know, tier two mods, tier one rigs instead of tier two rigs to keep things cheap and easy. Again, uh, on the cheap and easy side, we got hammerheads and hobgoblins tier one, because uh, that's all this character can use. And then I, the one thing that I spend on every time and I, I can't not spend on is ammo as the reward for a mission is about doing it fast rather than doing it uh, cost effective uh, if you really want to save on ammo cost the Dami is a really good choice and perhaps I'll do a video on the Dami in the future however uh, today since we are going to be fighting Serpentis uh, we are going to specifically be using the Inferno ammo for this mission so we're ready to go. Uh, it is one jump out, so I guess we'll go ahead and just undock and boogie. I haven't ran this mission in a while, so I don't remember exactly what it is. Uh, if you remember from the last video along in this series, you will find, or you will remember that I said to go look up uh, the mission on Eve Survival if you're not familiar with it. Uh, I'm not going to go look it up this time because I'm, I'm pretty familiar with this mission. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly what's in the, the, the room, but I, I've got a pretty good idea. So we're just going to kind of go with it. We're going to pet the cat while we're in travel because the cat is awesome. Uh, if you guys want to know what a suicide ganker looks like, it's this guy right here. He's scanning everything that's coming out. Uh, well, actually, that, that one might be doing the thing. But what they'll do is they'll sit on the, the station and they'll scan you. And when they scan you, you know you've been targeted. Uh, and then what they'll do is they'll, they'll watch where you went. So I went to Vink in this case. And they'll, they'll have like a cloak ship up here and then they'll see you go in the gate and then they'll set their trap for you when you come back the other way. Uh, so that's 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 what you really got to watch out for uh, is, is the scariest trap that you can run into. And my cat is stepping on the stream deck. Uh, that is the wrong character. I'm sorry. Go. Yeah, you can't step on that. I'm trying to do a mission. So there's a Nurgle. He's probably doing a burner. I probably want my D-scan open. Which is somewhere, I promise. Cat! She's pushing against my hand, so I can't click on the things. Uh, we want our D-scan open. Uh, we can put that right there. And make sure there's not a bunch of catalysts, but we're flying something cheap, so I'm not really worried about it. Uh, what we're really going to watch out for is the... Um, 
expanded probe launchers, and then we can just go ahead and go agent encounter warp for location. Uh, there's several ways to get to your mission. Uh, you can right click in space and find your mission and warp to the encounter that way. Uh, and then you can find it here and you can also find it in your mission journal and warp to it from your mission journal as well. No, don't eat that. I, I just fed you. Some cats walking all over the desk being cat. Uh, so we're just going to turn on our computers here. Uh, so some notes on this fit. Uh, we have 605 DPS and it's torpedoes, so it doesn't have the best application. So we're going to want to switch to precision when we can. Uh, and then uh, with max skills, this actually makes 900 DPS. It's really solid with good skills. Uh, and then the other bit is that we got 42 kilometer range uh, with the range scripts. And with good skills, you have 54 kilometer range before the range scripts. So if we had better skills, uh, we would definitely have a better time. I'm going to go ahead and open up my character menu here. Show you guys the skills in the missile tab. They're pretty awful. Uh, I don't have any solid skills on this character for missiles. Like, we have light missiles uh, trained, a missile bombardments for target navigations three, uh, guided missile precisions two, torpedoes is trained one, uh, missile launcher operations to four, missile projections three. So, I have some pretty bad skills. I also only have, uh, for science sake, I only have the. Um, I'm going to have the, the battleship skill trained to one as well. Uh, so this character has some really, really bad skills. As you can tell, that missile took a week to get to its destination. And this is Gistum, not Serpentis. So I got this mixed up with another mission. Don't eat that cat. You know not to eat those. So I, I did get this mis mission mixed up. I thought this was another mission. I thought this was the one with the virus. So, uh, I think this can't be the same mission I showed you guys last time. Was it? Stop it, cat! Don't eat that. Ah. So we're just gonna kind of make our way to this uh, acceleration gate here. So the good news is is that it's a it's an angel mission, and our highest resist is explosive and they do mostly explosive damage so we're in a pretty good spot feeling pretty happy about this i think this is a three room mission i swear this is the one that i did last time too no last time we did um what was that mission called wildcat strike that's right uh, eventually we'll, we'll be showing off some blitzes with these uh cheaper setups so you guys can see them but as you can see we can run our booster quite a bit uh, as long as we're not also running our micro warp drive. And I didn't decide to just run straight for the gate uh, with the micro warp drive because it's going to take us a minute to kill everything. It's not a big deal. Uh, but the prop mod is necessary and it is nice having a micro warp drive over an afterburner because an afterburner would only get us up to. Uh, I, I know the micro warp drive like really kicks you in the pants with capacitor and everything, but. An afterburner is only going to get us up to uh, 360 meters a second, which is more painful than having less cap. Uh, we're literally three times faster than if we had uh, an afterburner. And you're going to see here, this that velocity is going to mean a lot. Our ability to go fast is going to mean a lot. And our tank's doing just fine. So we don't we we didn't need that cap anyways. From using a micro warp drive, and that's the the biggest complaint about fitting a micro warp drive on a ship is that it, it takes twenty five percent of the cap off, uh, and I believe this one is twenty percent. I can't remember. Yeah, this one's twenty percent, so it does nick you for quite a bit of capacitor, which is kind of painful, uh, not having twenty percent of your capacitor. But we kind of make up for that with cap recharger and cap rigs, so it ends up being all right. Uh, again. I like the cap recharger because when we make this mistake and leave our repper on, we recover a little bit faster. We get back up to that 30% uh, window a lot better. Uh, if we always remember cap a peak recharge is at 30%. So we want to stay between, or is at 27.5%. So we want to stay between 25 and 30%. I like to stay above 30% for safety. Uh, and that gives me the ability to use the micro warp drive. Now anytime we can mitigate this DPS by running away with the micro warp drive because we are faster than everything 
Uh, we should go ahead and launch our drones as well. It'll help. Unfortunately, with low skills, we have low DPS. So things take a little bit longer. I set the drones onto this target as we're firing the third set of missiles. I don't even think that they'll make a difference because it's three three rounds to, to clear this. Actually, it might. Might mean we only take two missiles to clear it. And go ahead and hit F3 and recharge our shields just a little bit. And we're, we made it to the gate without using our prop mod. So if I remember correctly, the second room in this one has uh, NPCs that are roughly 100 kilometers away. Uh, which means that we're going to be running our micro warp drive quite a bit. I'm just going to go, my drones are on the way back. They'll, they'll make it back before we actually get to the gate. We have like a 10 second alignment time. My cat. The cat's just chilling on the desk like, hey, pet me. No, you guys can't hear her, but she's like, hey, hey, dad, pet me. She's making it very difficult to play you. She always says that. I love her for it. She's a good cat. So there's... I was wrong. This is the third mission that I thought it was. Anyways, there's a group down here. There's a group here. There's a group here. Uh, I don't believe we have to clear this group to beat the mission. But if we go aggress this group first, the whole room's going to aggress us. So we're going to go down to these guys first. And they're about 30 kilometers out of our range. So we're going to kill this group, and then we're going to go and clear this group. And there's two transports in this group, if I remember correctly. And those two transports are what will end up uh, giving us a loot. We're going to go ahead and reload. Our prop mods are on. Uh, we're going to move a bit. So we're already going after burner speed. We're now double after burner speed. Our ship can actually move, and we can get to the NPCs. If we had cruise missiles, we would have the range. Uh, but we don't have cruise missiles, and we're using torpedoes because they do more damage. Uh, for lower skills, it actually ends up working a lot better. Uh, we're going to go ahead and lock up these frigates. And again, we're just going to engage the one group at a time. Because if we pull this group and that group, we're going to get in trouble. Uh, so we just want to get this south group really quick. Or this lower group. Uh, we can switch to missile precision scripts. But we'll lose our range. Our 42 kilometer range is, is pretty nifty. Uh, so I think we'll go ahead and stick with the optimal range. We're going to go ahead and go for these frigates first. And we can launch our hobgoblins. Uh, as I don't like the small things, they web you and they take away your ability to, con to control range. I personally don't like that a lot. I, I, I like having control of the situation. We're going to go ahead and lock things that are locking us. Uh, which will be this group and then that group as well. The idea is that we're going to clear this group before that group gets to us. And that group should leave us alone. And of course we're going to watch our drone's health for damage uh it looks like we're gonna kill that impaler as well uh, everything's getting kind of close so i'm going to change these scripts over to precision and it will definitely increase our uh applied damage here do, do, do. precision precision switch switch uh i got a little close a little fast i'm gonna shut that off I need to remember the 25% cap will be okay, I'm pretty sure. If we really feel like we're in trouble, uh, what we can do is we can pull some distance. So I know this seems counterintuitive, but we're going to light the micro warp drive and fly away. But we can pull like 20 kilometers, kind of hanging out at the edge of our range here, which is 32. We're going to have a much better time. And like I said, I really like being in control of things, uh, and this is why. Uh, because if we have the micro warp drive, we can go 800 meters a second and just kind of get away from them. And once we pull this range, we're not taking as much damage. And since we're not taking as much damage, we can actually sustain our tank. And it's not that big of a deal. Looks like they shot our drones a little bit. I regenerate some cap and get some reps in. We can kind of hang out here. Uh, since we're missile fit, we're going to go ahead and get a high transversal. Our ship is currently slowing down about where we want to be. I'm going to shut off the repper as we're running out of cap. I'm just going to kind of chill here uh, and wait out the storm while doing as much damage as I can. I think I'm going to lose a drone here. Uh, I think I was not webbed due to the fact that they're trying to kill my drones. <laughs> I 
So at this point, it looks like we're in a scary situation. We're, we're really not, because you saw how quickly I mitigated that damage, just by pulling away a little bit. Right, kind of maintain our cap. Keep on killing these uh, smashers that are close. Next, we're going to go for these generals. We're just going to rep a little bit here and there. Try and maintain that, that magic cap ratio. And if they get, if too many get too close, again, we just kind of burn away with the micro warp drive. And we're going to launch the hobgoblins again, put them on that. Uh, we're going to go for this guy now. Shut off the micro warp drive. I just want to run it for a cycle to pull a little bit of distance away from these battleships because they're doing a lot of damage. Run that again. Again, our cap's really low right now. Want to get rid of these guys. I'm not a fan of the frigates getting close. This is not going as well as I thought it would. It's getting kind of a bad situation for me. That's okay. Uh, if we need to, we can always warp out. Uh, that's another thing that you want to do if you're unsure on missions is be ready to warp out. It also kind of requires that we don't let frigates close to us. When we pulled that range again. We're not taking a lot of damage, but we're already uh, somewhat damaged on our shields. And I guess this is an example of a harder mission, uh, especially since we're kind of having this oh, somewhat of a close situation here we're floating our shields right around 30 percent where we're, we're using our peak shield regen as well as our uh, peak cap regen we're just kind of active we just kind of got to pay attention to what's going on uh, that frigate is next we're working on the commander and it would have been a real problem if we had this group right So that guy's 40 kilometers away. I'm looking for additional targets that are in range. We killed those a uh, couple battleships here. We're having our drones kill the small things. We've lost a drone so far. Shield alarm went off. We'll go ahead and rep up a little bit. Killed the breaker. Kill the next guy. Lock up a couple more. We just got to note our range is 32. I don't know if I fired two at that guy. Oh no, I messed up big time. So I let my cap run a little bit longer than I should have. Again, we've been clearing the, the frigates. So we're not in a terrible way. We did let this general get close. And that's a battleship. So it's doing a lot of damage to us. And that's probably why our, our shields are dropping pretty hard right now. So I'm working on him. We're trying to regenerate our cap. When we get our cap that low, we kind of get in trouble. So we're just going to kind of wait it out a little bit. As long as we can. Up to about 25, 26. I'd like to get to 30% before I rep, but we're getting really low on health. Run a rep, and it looks like we're going to have to warp out, so I'm going to pull in my drones. We're going to go ahead and align to a station. I'm probably going to kill that battleship, and we're going to start running our repper. So our drones are in. We're killing the battleship. I'm going to stay as long as I can. If you ever get into a situation where you're uncomfortable uh, and you're taking too much damage, you always just align out and get ready to warp and in that situation i made the mistake of um burning my cap a little bit or using too much of my capacitor uh, so we're just going to go ahead and dock here and we're going to take our free station repairs so we could have even waited all the way until our, we were in hole uh, if we really wanted to uh, but i was getting a little uncomfortable there i really hope i have docking access i have docking access to this refinery so we'll go ahead and we'll grab that free repair at the refinery and uh, get our capacitor and shields back. And uh, we'll go back to the mission. But it does happen when you're you're newer. You, you occasionally have to warp out of missions because you don't do enough DPS and you, you have a harder time clearing stuff. And it just kind of 
the way it goes. Go ahead and dock up in the bunny ranch. Uh, we'll grab our free repairs and then we'll go back. Uh, what we could have done is we could have been a uh, rat specific tank. We could have... There's actually a lot we could have done. Rat, rat specific tank. Uh, we could have kept range better. We could have had a better shield wrapper. We could have had a better ship. Um, but for new players, I, I do understand that it's harder to get the fancy ships. I'm going to go ahead and warp back to the location. And one of the reasons why I kill the frigates first every time, or try and work on frigates right away, is because we don't want them to be doing uh, the disrupt. Because if they disrupt us, we get in trouble. Uh, the way out of that is to run away with the micro warp drive. Or, uh, rather than running away with micro warp drive, you can kill them. Uh, or if you have a micro jump drive on your fit, you can just micro jump away. And this is the uh, somewhat frustration when you're new at missions, is occasionally you have to warp out due to taking too much damage. Generally when you come back, you're okay. Uh, there's one mission that will let you warp out, but will tackle you the second time you come in. And that's Worlds Collide in the second room. Uh, sometimes, uh, or well, most of the time, the frigates won't scram or disrupt you when you first come in. But when you come back in, they will disrupt you. I've lost a ship to that. It wasn't very fun. We're going to turn on our computers again. Go ahead and head on in. And we're going to use our micro warp drive this time because we don't want to wait forever. Again, this is where the micro warp drive really shines. I get to go right back in. Some would argue that if I didn't have a micro warp drive, I wouldn't have had to warp out and come back in. Uh, but with practice, you get a little bit better at missions, and I'm kind of rusty on this ship, so I don't remember uh, what exactly you need to do to stay alive. Uh, so, I, I, I would say that we could probably fly away a little bit better, and also, if we had better skills, we would have uh, much higher success rate. And again, we only have the battleship's uh, command of one. I only get the 5% bonus and 10% bonus rather than, what did that be, 25 and 50. So there's a lot of skills here that I'm missing that are really easy to train. Uh, and we'll put you in a really good spot. So it looks like we're just going to kind of go this direction. And there's two battleships that are right in my face here. We're going to go for those two first. Those are the things that are going to do the most damage. Uh, and then it looks like we have a frigate as well around here. I'm going to find out exactly where he is. I'm going to lock up that frigate there, and then we're going to throw our hobgoblins out and have our hobgoblins work on the frigate. And of course, our lock times are forever and a day. Uh, I'm going to get my ship moving right away to kind of mitigate a little bit of damage. Put our drones on the frigate. We're just going to kind of clean things up. I believe this mission, so I, I, I was wrong on the description of the mission twice. You don't kill a transport ship for the militant. The last thing you kill will drop a cargo container and that will contain your militant or it'll end up in your cargo. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've done this mission. Looking it up would have been a really good idea for me. And I just showed you guys what can happen if you don't look up a mission. You know, perform poorly when you go to do it. Go ahead and fire there. I get excited every time I hit F1. I'm like, yeah, F1! Press the key. Go ahead and wrap this guy up. I pull my drones back in as they're taking damage. Uh, we got two more rockets to clear that. I'm going to go ahead and pull our... Yeah, we're going to rep up a bit. We're going to watch our capacitor a little bit better. I think that the battery would be better. I'm going to publish the fit with the battery on it. So the battery would buy you more time. The, the, the regen's the same. But the the percentage wouldn't wouldn't fluctuate quite as much, and it's the exact same amount of gigajoules per second. It just the recovery time when you're down low, when you accidentally go too low, is, is much faster with the cap recharger. 
rather than cat battery, and that's why I prefer it. It's it's a really weird preference, but it's the preference I have. All right, so we got all of our aggro back. I'm gonna go ahead and work on things. Oh no, I was wrong on the personnel transport. That guy's gonna have our militants, so I'm gonna start uh, voting towards that. I found the gist the the transport. We do have a set of NPCs that we have to kill. It looks like... Watching that, it's 88. 90. I think it's okay. It's not going to die. Can go ahead and rep up a bit. I like being on the higher side of the shields. If we can afford it. And we can. We have plenty of uh, capacitor left. We can go ahead and pop this militant now that we're close to it. Um, let the drones finish that. Looks like the drones are taking aggro again. So I'm going to pull them in. That liquidator is about to go down. And then we'll nuke this transport ship. Why oh, is that liquidator still alive? Oh, that's right. I got like no skills on this character. It's so good and so bad at the same time because the skills are so poor. It's like, hey, let's do this with not only no skill points, but <laughs> a cheap ship too. Uh, honestly though, th this ship is significantly better with Kaldari Battleship trained to three or four. Uh, and then uh, the missile skills trained a little bit better. Uh, really make this ship shine. We're gonna go ahead and grab the Ingo Port Wreck uh, that will have our militants in it. And uh, we wanna loot that. Uh, it's always good to grab the uh, second set of militants that spawn in this mission. I think that there is another transport. Uh, if you grab the second set, uh, you'll always have a backup in the event that somebody uh, comes in and steals your militants. So it's good to... Uh, it's either this mission or another one where there's uh, some militants that you can uh, take. And having a few backup in your station is a good idea. Because occasionally what somebody will do is they'll come and steal this wreck while you're running the mission. It makes for a not very fun time for you. And uh, the easy answer is just to have a backup in station. And then you just ignore them. So I ran the rep probably more than I should. Uh, again, this is why I like the cap recharger for the battery. And yeah, just kind of personal preference. So I'm going to keep on firing. We're waiting for... Uh, this mission will mark itself as complete when we're done. Hit the little read details. Uh, we need the militants in our cargo. Uh, and it looks like we have the item, but the location is not complete. So I have the militants in my cargo. We have to kill uh, the NPCs that mark the mission as complete. And I believe it's those which I have locked. And we're just about done here. It's not taking us horribly long. Really should minimize that. Uh, I'm gonna help my 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 drones here. They they seem to be having a hard, having a hard time killing this, and since I can do damage to it, I will go ahead and help. Uh, with ships that use guns, you can just fly directly away from the frigates and kill them that way. Uh, ships that use missiles don't really have that luxury. Uh, they have to use their missiles to kill the frigates, and sometimes they do pretty poor application to the frigates. So that makes it somewhat stressful. However, with the two two computers, it's not horrible, but it ain't great. So you can kill them. It just it's it's not a fun experience. We're gonna pull these in. We're gonna throw our hammerheads back out uh, and use those to help us with these. You can see our our capacitors recharged. We can go ahead and run it a bit more. We're just waiting for a little check mark to show up here. It'll happen. Uh, I believe once we kill these two. I could be wrong, though. Again, I didn't look up the mission, uh, which is entirely on me. Uh, we could have to go and kill these guys. And I said I was going to watch my hammerheads. Try and clear these out.
And then what's funny is I'm going to shoot the torpedo at this guy, and I bet you it dies first. So I'm going to go ahead and fly this way. And then just like that, a uh, mission popped up. We got a little check mark, and we got the little set destination button. Our mission's done. We don't have to interact with this guy. And we can go ahead and turn in our mission. That's it. Uh, if you guys like this video, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below. If you dislike this video or uh, like watching me fumble around, uh, make sure you, you you comment your thoughts. Uh, this was a very low scope point character, or very low scope, very poorly trained pilot flying a very cheap Raven into a level four at 500 million esque. Uh, after the uh, cost changes to the battleships, this is insane. Like it's only 433 million esque, and I think the ship itself was like 300. Uh, most of the cost of this was in the hole, um, and before this ship was only like 300 million esque. Uh, so it's it, it is more expensive than it was, uh, but it's able to do the mission. And then if you upgrade to like a, a, a Kaldari Navy Raven. Or something a little bit better, or you know, upgrade the modules a little bit, get your TNT torpedoes, get uh, you know the Kaldari battleship skill up a little bit, train torpedoes greater than one, get missile support skills. This ship gets a lot, a lot better. Not not a little bit better, but a lot better. Uh, so with good skills, this ship can be quite a lot of fun to fly. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one.